Good afternoon, San Diego. You are listening to the Average Joe Real Estate Investment Show, and I am your host, Chris McCullough. I am the Average Joe. I'm a real estate investor, and this happens to be my show. Today, I'm actually really excited to have two of my good friends here, and they're fellow investors in San Diego, Daryl Kukin and Imran Clark with Kukin & Clark Partners here in San Diego. Just so you know, these guys do it all. I, I, you know, I've known them for a long time, and it's unbelievable just the amount of stuff that they do. New construction, fix and flips, buy and holds, wholesaling, raising capital, you name it, and they probably do it. And on top of that, they also run the San Diego Investment Club for investors, by investors in Del Mar. Uh, Cook and Clark, absolutely a shining example of what real estate investing should really look like. And I'm excited to have both of them on the show today. Hey, guys, how are you? We're doing wonderful. Thanks so much, Chris. Doing awesome, Chris. Very So cool. happy to be here. Yeah, I'm actually glad to have you guys, too. I think, you know, the best part about it is I've known both of you for quite a while. Uh, it's, what, probably been about two years. At least. And I've been going to your guys' club. That's kind of how we originally met. Plus, we have a lot of mutual friends in the market. And I know when they said, hey, Chris, we want to give you your own show on real estate investing, I was like... I know exactly who I want to interview, and it's been you guys. Huh. And we've been talking about it for a while, but, but you've been so extremely busy. You've been flying all over the country. You've been investing in different markets, and we're going to talk about that on the show. But I, I finally got a chance to get you in here, so I'm really, really pumped about it. Um, so I guess with that said, let's get to it. Let's get to work. Sounds um, great. Both of you guys, I mean, I think a lot of the people that are going to be listening today, they don't know the backstory. And as an investor myself, uh, you know, I was in the Marine Corps when I first started investing. I retired after 20 years. But a lot of people, I think, when they watch TV and they see these shows, they're like, oh, well, that guy, he just he came for money, he has money, and he just, you know, he just invests in real estate. And that's not true. That is not true. That not is true not at all. true. <laughs> like probably 99.9% .9 of the time. So how did you guys get started? What were you before you became Kukin and Clark real estate investors? Well, okay. Um, I, this is Imran. I'll, I'll start. So... Uh, my background is the uh, yeah, basically a uh, high education, you know, get educated and and get a good job, you know, uh, going all the way back to that you know, rich dad, uh, poor dad book by Kiyosaki that we all read. That's one of the things that uh, lit a fire under my butt. But I was on that path. Uh, I went all the way to PhD in biochemistry, molecular biology, and I ended up here in San Diego. Wow. Um, did my postdoctorate and then working for biotech companies. In fact, I worked in biotech as a senior scientist for 10 years, um, but knew I had to do something else. You know, the 401k and social security right. was not going to take care of me later in life. And, and I loved what I do. I still love science. I have a passion for it, but I, you know, I was looking to my future. Yeah. I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit and, uh, you know, like doing my own thing. Um, so that, that's how I got started. Uh, and it didn't happen overnight. So, we, you know, we could talk about that a little bit more. But um, So does yeah. that mean you're a doctor? Yeah. So you know, can I call so you doctor? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not a, a doctor that's going to operate Dr. on you. But yeah, you know, <laughs> doctor of science, right? So, Awesome. Very cool. Well, this is Daryl. Uh, it's been in the works for quite a while, actually. Um, I got married, been married over 20 years now. Wow. My wife became sick, and we lost everything a long time ago, 2001, right. 2002. We ended up moving to San Diego, lived with a father-in-law for a little bit, uh, got a job and in property management. That's a little wow. bit why I chose real estate. Right. However, uh, again, after reading Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad, got me excited. Finally cool. realized that, wow, there is something different out there. Right. I also got a PhD, a public high school diploma. Right. Right. <laughs> so I didn't do the traditional go to school, get a job, you know do that for 40 years and try to retire with a watch. Right. But uh, I saw a sign on the side of the road. <laughs> I didn't road. even get a watch. <laughs> <laughs> saw a sign on the side of the road and said, real estate investor seeks apprentice. I thought, well, this is absolutely perfect. Right. What that was was actually an educational program. That's how Imran and I, I met. Yeah, uh, I saw the same sign. So you guys actually met at a, going to a course. We uh, did. Yeah. Okay, and so networking. you saw the sign. So how did, how did you, did you see a sign as well and you ended up I saw it? a sign on the road. Okay, and bandit signs. So, so for those there of you listening, bandit signs work. Okay, so we'll go. <laughs> yeah, and I ignored it for the longest time. And then, and then uh, later on, I wanted to write down the number. And whoever was putting out those signs was a genius because they, they didn't leave them out all the time. They took them all down. And I went back looking for it. Right. Couldn't find it. You know, <laughs> you know the, the psychology worked on me. I'm like, yeah. oh, no, I missed it. I Sense didn't write down that number. And then when they popped up again, I, I, I stopped. 
on the freeway, almost like you know, on an off ramp. Right. The wind had blown the sign over, and I walked over to it. And I wrote down the number, and yeah, you know, they had their sales pitchiness to it, but they also had a good education program. We just focused on what we needed to get out of what, it. What education program was it, if you don't mind? It was Renatus. Renatus. Yeah, they're around, they were um, under a former name before, and now they're they're Renatus. Right. Um, but. Yeah, the education was great. Best thing you yeah. ever did? Well, best thing absolutely. We ever did. Best thing we ever did. Well, I kind of wish I could get him as a sponsor now because here we are pumping him up. That's awesome. Well, it was, it was great education. And beyond that, though, it was also an introduction to a lot of personal development because right. you, it, it takes more than just being educated. It's the people we were introduced to. So it wasn't just what they had in, in their system, but it opened up a whole world of, you know, of folks that, you know, we met that open up, you know, well, I think that it's all relationships. Yeah, we talk about all the time. It. I mean, really yeah. this business, a majority of this business, I would say 90% of it is really networking. Your network is your net worth. I mean, just like meeting you guys, I ended up meeting, uh, guys that I've worked with that I've done deals with that I met through you who I met at a club. And, and, uh, I know I just went to a club meeting the other night, ended up meeting a few other people where I was like, wow, um, this is pretty, and that's really really where the gold is in my opinion well this is a people business right you don't buy a house unless you talk to people right right yeah <laughs> otherwise i mean yeah. you you might as well go out and get a a, a play set uh, at the local toys or us you know yeah. right. well and i started out uh uneducated i i didn't you know see some sign and 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 think hey i'm gonna go to you know real estate investing school and then start i was ignorance on fire before that and wow. had uh and i made expensive mistakes. I mean, right. you're going <laughs> to, they say you're going to pay for your education one way or another, That's true. you know, and, and, you know, I did, you know, to the right. tune of like a quarter million dollars. Wow. You know, I wow. uh, started out, you know, my first uh, real estate investment was uh, my wife at the time, we, we, you know, bought our first place was a condo, right? And, uh, you know, it's time to expand, you know, start a family and all that. So um, we bought a house. Right. We did that, needed more space, but we kept the condo and we rented it out. So I didn't really think about it at the time, but that's right. when I became an investor. Right. You know? So when we, you, we owned that and, and I got excited about that and saw, oh, you know, let's take this bigger and bigger. It ultimately resulted in me uh, really not knowing what I'm doing, buying into an apartment building. Wow. And, yeah. and I ended up in trouble on that because I wasn't educated. I, I didn't know anything about, you know, all these clubs that existed with, right. with all these experienced people and resources. I, I knew nothing about it. Could you I didn't imagine if you had met Jay Massey? Exactly. Uh, well, Jay yeah. Massey, That's interesting funny. you bring him up. Uh, he, he went through the same education system we did at the same time. You know, I and actually, I actually heard time. that. And you know, it's yeah. funny. He's going to be on my show here in the future. I yeah. actually talked to his assistant the other day, and he's going to drive down here to San Diego. Oh, awesome. Yeah, he's an amazing show. guy. And amazing yeah. Absolutely amazing. And phenomenal actually, story and, and phenomenal crazy person. good story. And I actually met him through you two yeah. at one of your club meetings, yeah. which yes, I think is go. great. So he went to the same thing. But could you imagine if you had that kind of backing or an individual that you had met somewhere? And then you decided going trying to get an apartment, you know, complex. Yeah, it'd be a whole different. It'd be a whole different. Oh yeah, different yeah, you know, and it didn't help that I that I bought this from 2005 going into 2006. Oh, so I mean, there was yeah. some bad timing on that, but it was also rash decisions in my. I'm a lot smarter now, right. a lot more experienced. Well, that's when that's when we got into real estate. 2006 when, was when we got educated. Right. Um, right. Quit my job right away. I thought I was going to make a million bucks the first year, and, well, that didn't happen. Right, right. Uh, I ended up moving back into my father-in-law's house with my wife and three kids. Wow. That That was a very humbling experience. Right. Uh, sleeping on a blow-up mattress in the middle of the floor. Yeah, Daryl we basically homeless. went homeless. Yeah. Wow. So um, yeah. we finally ended up closing our first uh, deal. It was a short sale uh, after partnering up in 2009. And uh, our first check was fifty fifty six thousand fifty six thousand dollars, yeah. which so, allowed us to to really realize that hey, this can happen. This is real. It's right. one of the hardest deals we ever did. <laughs> okay, so so you basically you got a job, you quit your job, you thought you were gonna make all this money, ended up going homeless. Did you quit your job immediately as well? I did actually. First, I lost my jobs. Um, so the biotech industry here in san diego is i, I like to say it's very fluid you know, there's a lot of small companies we, right. we don't have a lot of big anchor companies like you do you know like an amgen or something like you have up in thousand oaks uh so the companies come and go here you know they're they're always raising money they may run out of money they get swallowed up uh through all this you know my first company got swallowed up by another company and and they let everybody go you right. know the second company uh, decided they want to go ipo hired new management then that then 
cleaned house and let a whole bunch right. of people go, you know, except for they want to focus on certain projects. And then my third company, they ran out of money, let all the middle management go, which was me, and right. then hired us back and let us go again and hired wow. us back. In a two-year period, I, I went through three jobs. Wow. You know? um, two of them with the same company. Right. <laughs> Even and so going through all this, all stress, yeah. Uh, so during this time when I was without work and I, I exhausted uh, looking for a job, I decided to, you know, I'm going to become an entrepreneur. I got into um, sales and stuff. Right. But I didn't make money right away. I was I was new at this, you know. And I, I thought I, I was going to make a, a million people bucks. Think they're going to just like, get out no. and make a ton of cash no. right away? I went nine months without making a dime. Uh, hmm. So I went back into my industry, uh, called my contacts, said, "Hey, I want, you know," and and I didn't burn bridges. That was the other important thing. I didn't right. burn bridges. So I got I got hired back into the company I uh, you know I was working for before. I thought they would disappear, and then they got an influx of cash. Right. And that's and that was after I got education through you know what Daryl and I right. went through, and we focused hardcore on what we're doing. So I was now I'm doing real estate and had my job at the same time. So you actually worked and did that at the same time. You quit your job full time, and then did so. I'm assuming you eventually quit your job. Eventually, yeah. well, you know, and and one of the interesting parts about partnering up mm -hmm. with each other is we each had resources that e each other didn't have. Right. right. You know, I, I had, had a paycheck. I, he had the paycheck, <laughs> right. and he had time, <laughs> and I had time. He was able to put a little bit of the money into the marketing to right. to, to right. launch our business, right. while I right. spent a lot of time doing the paperwork. I wouldn't and even mind talking a little bit about that because I think yeah. a lot of people think you know, well, I just show up and start making cash, or I'll just knock on doors and make cash. But you know, you do have to kind of have a little bit of seed money to get going. You, you do, even if it's a little bit. Um, you know, we started out wholesaling, so so uh, we we sold the contracts of these houses right. to other people after we locked up the deals. Right. Um, but we still did have to have seed money. Yeah, we had to do marketing. Uh, we needed certain materials. We needed to get uh, put down payments into escrow. Mm -hmm. You know, even if they were going to get swapped out by somebody else. You know, so we didn't start out with a with a ton of cash right. uh, or you know backed by a bunch of investors like we are now. Right. You we'll know? talk a little bit about wholesaling too because I know we're getting ready. We got to uh, pay the bills, so we're going to take a commercial here in a second. But I know also in, the, in a future interview that I'm going to be doing, I'm bringing Todd Toback on. Yeah. Yes. And Todd Toback is a great guy. Uh, I've been a, a big fan of his for quite a while, and uh, I'm I'm actually looking forward to talking about just that because I think a lot of people actually do get into wholesaling in order to kind of generate, you know, some seed money to get into other things. It's a great way to start. It's, it's a great yeah, way to start, start, but you, you got to do it right. Right. And, and that's where I think a lot of people go wrong. They don't do it right. Right. They don't right. know how to do it right. And, yeah. and uh, well, I won't get into some of my personal <laughs> beliefs on who they're listening to, but, <laughs> right. uh, you know, it is what it is. So let me, let me just put this out there. So both of you are now officially full-time investors. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um I thought I would go for a year and then quit my job. It, it took two years before I walked out. Okay. Uh, but I walked out voluntarily. Right. Because, Very nice. Because our business was taking off. All right. Well, we'll talk some more about that. We're going to pay the bills real quick, take a quick commercial. And this is the Average Joe Real Estate Investment Show with Chris McCullough. We'll talk to you soon. All right. It's Chris McCullough. I'm back. This is the Average Joe Real Estate Investment Show. And I have Kukin and Clark here in the studio with me. And uh, we literally were talking during the break. I'm really excited to start getting into the meat, getting into the meat of why I really want to get them here. Um, so let's get into it, guys. When I first mo met both of you, you were doing, I knew you for doing fix and flips. Right. And as You've matured, and I think as I've matured, and I understand a lot more, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time really analyzing the market. And uh, one of the guys, you know, right up in Riverside, he's going to be at your guys' next meeting. Who is it? Bruce Norris. Bruce, Bruce Norris. Norris, right? One I started listening favorites. to Bruce Norris, and I started realizing I'm not, I'm not studying. I'm not being a student of the market. And I started doing that. And then when you guys started saying what you're really getting into or into right now, but at the time you were getting into it, I was like, this is, this is exactly what I saw when I was studying the market. So let's talk about that. You guys still doing fix and flips, but you really started moving into new construction and raising capital and buy and hold. So tell, tell me more about that. Yeah, well, um, go where the money takes you, you know, research your markets and, and find out what the best areas are to invest. We've done that. And our out of state stuff that we're doing right now, uh, we're building new homes and we are doing a lot of buy and holds. Mm -hmm. Right. We're also doing some new construction here in San Diego because the fix and flip market has, well, 
There's nope. nothing out there for <laughs> it. I mean, the margins, right. the margins just don't work. You've got you know 40 or 50 offers on a property that just hits the market for fix and flippers. The competition. It's way too much. Yeah, I'm not going to overpay thing. for a property just to do a deal. Well, I think a lot of people are in San Diego. I mean, the inventory is so tight. And, yep. and not only that, but you're talking to me, it's a cash on cash situation. Like we were just exactly. talking about why I flip in Texas. The cash on cash stuff is what's important to me. So if you're buying a four hundred, five hundred thousand dollar house, like I know you guys had one in Kensington, right. you're buying you're buying a four or five hundred thousand dollar house, you're having to drop another, you know, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars into it, and you're walking away with twenty thousand dollars after doing a six month flip. Yep. Is it really worth the risk is it right. really worth the time is it worth the stress because i mean that's stressful yeah that's exactly right you know in, in fact a deal like that that you just described um you know a few years ago we were walking away with sixty eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars in net net profit and right. like you said it's dropped down to the 20 and people get excited about it oh i made twenty five thousand. no you know i might as well just use my broker's license and and work on commission what, right. you know what's the point of uh, all that risk and time mm-hmm uh, so you follow the numbers. You got to be nimble in this business. You got to be willing to to learn new things, uh, shift with the market, and and do what makes sense. And the markets come up. You know, a few years ago, uh, you couldn't build a house for you know it cost more to build right. than did to sell. Uh, we're in a different situation now. So doing new construction works, but it's a it's a whole other animal. Right. right? And right. You got to do it right. And there's a lot of people coming to this business, and they're not understanding. You know all these costs. Um, you the know, complexities Sandy, of it, right? You know, I mean, there's there's all these uh, you know fees and bonds and all kinds of stuff that you've got here in California, which is one of the right. reasons we've gone out of state. Right, the new here. construction. You know, even simple things as permits. I, I remember the first time I called my uh, my project manager in Texas, or he called me and he says, "Well, Chris, we." We have this permit issue with the with the property, and I know how much it costs here. And I'm just like, oh man, this is just awful. Well, how much is it going to cost me? He says, well, it's going to be about twenty bucks, and I got to go down to the to the, the house. It <laughs> should be done, you know, maybe by tomorrow. And I'm like, what? Yeah, I'll, I'll send you forty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. You know what? What might take you nine to twelve months here, and if you're going through coastal commission, if you're doing a parcel map, and you could be throwing two years into it, right? Right. You know, could get done in three or four months. Right. state and you, you walk into to uh yeah the county office to say i'm going to build a house right. right you're like well how big is it going to be i said about 1500 square feet they say here's here's the fee you pay it, you get your permit <laughs> and you just go about <laughs> yeah, your i mean it's not right. always like that but right. there are places that are like but that. it's still it's still a lot easier than san diego i would even say you know if you wanted to get into um the buy and hold market i'm assuming you guys are buying outside of san diego yeah. or california we are yeah. and and i would assume if i'm wrong let me know but maybe the tenancy laws well, a, a couple reasons. I mean, Cost, we've got some cap rates. buy and holds cap down rates. here. In, yeah, cap, cap rates. rates. Are we've got some buy and holds here in San Diego, but not through traditional ways of acquisitions. You know, right. we've we've done so some like sub twos. We've done some exactly. sub twos, exactly. exactly. Okay. Some wrap mortgages. Um, yeah, going out of state is uh, the margins are spectacular. I mean, we're looking at you know a, a net net cash flow of of fifteen percent cap rates. Right, it's, and it's here crazy. I think the going cap rate right now uh, on commercial is what five point six. That's I, high. I, I had a, yeah, yeah. It, that's high. And right. I had a guy call me the other day, you know, because I'm a retail real estate agent as well, on top of right. being an investor. And I, I had a guy call me from um, up there, and and he's a an app guy. He created, he went, they went public, he made a killing. He wants to invest and buy do buy and holds. He's like, yeah, I get a couple million dollars. I'm looking for about a five percent return. I'm like. And it's, how much it, you know? Yeah. How much capital do you have, or or debt do you have? Um, Per door right. in California, San Diego, you know, you could, you could be half a million bucks for one door and a low cap rate, or you could spread that out, you know, whether you're doing multiple single family homes or you're doing a uh, multiplexes, right. you know, you, you're just getting, you know, five, 10, 20 doors. Right. You know, um, well, I got a question yeah. for you. Okay. So it, since we are kind of down this rabbit hole and I want to go back to construction, but yeah. I, I just find this a very interesting topic and I'm sure a lot of other people do because I think you guys know as well as I know, a lot of people are moving more towards the buy and hold type markets because the market has adjusted a little bit, especially here in San Diego, fix and flips, you know, just they're, they're, the inventory is really tight. So when we talk about, you just mentioned something, spreading out the money, picking up more stuff, cost per door, et cetera. Um, I guess what I when I start thinking about the cap rates and I start looking at how the market is and and what I would have to invest to try to get a decent return and leverage the properties that I have, um, going outside of this market outside of San Diego, I would assume you're giving up the appreciation because yeah. that's that's so there's really three things you're looking at with a buy and hold property. You have your tax, your ghost taxes. You have a tax where you're making money. You're making money on the appreciation of the home. 
and you're also going to be making money off of the total return from people actually paying rent. So do you is it does it scare you that you're walking away from maybe a really a higher appreciation? Well, uh, appreciation is always speculative, right. you know, at least in the short term. I mean, in the long term, I think it's less, you know, if, if you're talking 20, 30 years. Right. Right. Um, so two things. I, you, you've got to well, decide what you're going to focus on. I mean, cash flow, cash flow is king. I mean, they say it and it's true. Right. You know, you're in this business, you're flipping, you're doing construction, you're wholesaling. Um, that's, that's short-term money. That, that's not even really investing. That, that's running a business and you get, you know, chunk change. Right. Um, but when business slows down, your income goes away. Right. You know, when you, when you have, uh, you know, rentals or notes, you know, if you're investing on the note side of it, you don't even have to deal with the tenants. You know, right. we, we right. have investors that work with us. We're the ones that handle all the problems. Right. They sit back and collect their they checks, right? Their right. It doesn't check. matter whether right. their place is tenanted or not. We still right. pay, have to pay, right? Um, that's cash flow. And you sit back and you get that every month. That's, that's more of a, pat, you know, right. and, and that's something you can retire on. You know, I like it with real estate because it's connected to a physical asset. Um, yeah, we're in well, lower appreciating markets compared to California. Right. But when the market goes bad, uh, those houses also don't uh, lose 50% of their value. Like, I would assume like, that they stay relatively stable. They in stay pretty stable, first rise you know, maybe 10%. And, and on, a, on a per door basis, you know, if you lose 10% of a million dollar house, you know, here you're, you're out 100 grand. If you lose right. 10% of a $30,000 house, I could scrounge up 3,000 grand, right. you know, right. if I had to make it up. The other thing is we never pay retail. So our, our we, we buy, buy into equity. Correct. We, yeah, right. exactly. And so way, we have you know, cushion. If you've got a $10,000 equity position, uh, you're collecting 200 bucks a month, 2400 bucks a year, mm -hmm. and you have a heater go out that cost you 2400 bucks. Well, you just lost your entire cash flow over the entire year. Right. So these are all things that when getting into property, you got to buy the property right. You've got to make sure that those things are taken care of, that yeah. those aren't going to come up. What if we do have to liquidate the property? I right. mean, you want to be in a position where you can make money or at least break even. You don't want to lose money. So, Absolutely. So, so we're always buying into a deep equity. Deep equity. Absolutely. That makes great sense. And I know, you know, so if I were saying, if, if somebody wanted to stay in San Diego, California in general, um, I know there are a couple spots where I have picked up some properties. Um, I don't mention one of them because it's my little honey hole, and I don't think anybody's really discovered it yet, except for a couple people in L.A. But it wouldn't matter, you know, because That's a good point. <laughs> you can invest anywhere in the country and make money. Right. The key is you have to have the right people and the right knowledge. And, and so, we're going to talk yeah, about that we, next. We I get think that's that, the big so. one. We're going to get, because we're going to take another. Your honey break. hole could be somebody else's hell hole because they would, <laughs> they would be buying the wrong house. I mean, that's you could right. be on the wrong side of the street. It, that's right. It, it can make that big of a difference. It's a huge difference because yeah. I know the ones that I'm picking up, I can pick them up at about 40,000. I could turn around and rent them uh, for about anywhere from uh, 1,100 to yeah. 1,300 a month, Yeah, those which are good. is wonderful. Yeah, And that's actually here in California. Now, the beautiful part behind that is even with the tenancy issues, let's say they just don't want to pay or this, that, and the other um, because it's, it's military based. And of course, I'm a retired Marine. I usually know who they're working with anyways. I just give a call and say, look, tell this guy to either pay me or, you know, at least move out. I'll even give him a grand to just get about his business and right. help him move. That way I can re-rent the place. So, yeah. uh, well, you know, treat your tenants like employees. They're, they're stewards of your asset. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you yeah, know, you set contracts up where it's automatic payments out of their paycheck. You know, if they're right. military, it's, you know, there's, a, there's, there's ways to... To protect your the security. offset risk, right. right? Offset the risk. Well, we're going to take another commercial real quick because we have to pay the bills. And when we come back, I want to get into new construction because that fascinates me. Um, I, I just think that you know, I, I think anybody that's been doing this for a while, they know new construction. After new construction, we're going to start getting into developments. After developments, we start getting in multi-use and. You know, we got a really booming market. So I definitely want when to we hit condo conversions, get out of the market. Time to time to get rid of everything. Right. We're gonna talk about <laughs> when that. When, when the condo market goes out, it goes insane, it goes crazy. Right. It's time to it's time to get going. It's That's time right. to uh, take a take a vacation to the Virgin Islands. There you go. <laughs> All right. So with that said, this is uh, Chris McCullough again, your host at the average Joe Real Estate Investment Show. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll see you here in a minute. Hey, we're back. This is Chris McCullough, Average Joe Real Estate Investment Show, and uh, we're going to kick right into new construction and, and basically how they're paying for all of their, their uh, new construction and buy and hold. So welcome back, guys. 
uh, right before we got off, we were talking about buy and holds. I really want to just get knee deep in new construction because I believe that is kind of the path right now for people that have the ability. And if you don't have the ability, um, you need to joint venture with somebody that's already doing it. And these guys at the very end of the show, we'll actually talk about it. You can meet them if you're interested in learning, just like I did. I was interested in learning this business. So I apprenticed under a guy and I didn't make a whole ton of money with him right away, but he taught me the business. So I, I, I want to get into new, new construction. Tell me everything in less than an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going to be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, like everything, you make your money on the buy. Right. You know, absolutely. You, 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 whether it's a, a, a fix and flip, a new construction, or a buy and hold, right, Daryl? Um, don't depend on, say, appreciation or changes in the market or, or whatever. I mean, th you have to make your money on the purchase. Absolutely. So yeah. with new construction, are you looking to – are you purchasing entitled land or are you basically redeveloping something that was like a, a teardown or – both. Both, Both, yes. Okay, perfect. So like yeah. burnouts, things like that. Exactly. Or not even burned out, just a, you know, an older house, uh, you know, older, smaller house in a neighborhood that supports uh, the newer, bigger houses, mm. you know. Like a pop top? Or? Sure. You, you find a lot of coastal communities like this that mm -hmm. have something built in the 50s and they're in a decent right. sized lot. And you could take a, you know, maybe a 2,000 square foot house and turn it into a 4,500 right. square foot right. high end, you know, and, and make great margins on it. I mean, you have to be willing to do it. Well, so let me let me see if I got this right. I know I've done my research on this and I, I have a good friend of mine who does multi-use and also just strictly new developments. And he told me, you know, you're looking at as far as uh, percentage of return, it's anywhere from 30% above just, it's just, and in, in sometimes he says it's even like 50% to 100% on new construction and redevelopment. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I kind of look at these as at least the 50% gross. I mean, we're gonna have all our expenses, you know, cost of money and other right. stuff in there. Uh, and I wanna be able to absorb that and still have a good profit margin. So yeah, if we're gonna be into into it just on cost of purchase and construction for a million bucks, right. you know, I want that property to be selling for 1.5 million. Right. That's, that's the way I look at it. Absolutely, yeah, that makes right. sense. Well, it, it all comes down to numbers. You have to know your numbers. Mm -hmm. You have to surround yourself with the right people and, and build your team correctly, you know? Especially uh, when you're out of state, because I know you guys do a lot of stuff out of state. And, yeah. and I'm curious about that. So you get into new construction, you have to build a team, you have to know your numbers. How do you, I know how I do it in Texas. Now I'm lucky I have family out there, but how do you guys do it out of state how do you build the team? How do you how do you know the numbers for that area? I'm I'm really curious about that. Well, in a way, again, you, you got to surround yourself with the right people. We our builder that's that's building some of our new homes here in in Oceanside is from out of state. Out of state, mm -hmm. right? He actually built hundreds of homes out there, right? And he was a little disappointed when we told him all what all we have to do is raise the money and and uh, help build the team and you guys, you'll do it for us. And he was a little disappointed that he has to go back to three degree weather, <laughs> Right. <laughs> but he's willing to do it. Right. right. So he's going back to where he just came from. And what state was that? Missouri. Missouri. So he's going back to Missouri. You're basically right. working with him exclusively and, and building out this team in Missouri that he already had. And just, in fact, in this instance, uh, we actually, we opened another company Oh, wow. And we made him a partner of the company. Oh, wow. So Great. therefore, he's not making profits on, on just the builds. He gets paid when the home is done and sells. Right. It's a lot of incentive for him to come in under budget, under time. Right. And uh, it, it just allows us for a better working relationship. Absolutely. Right. And, you know, and we're looking, we're, we're in other states too. Um, and, and the key is, I mean, like you said, you have family in Texas. You know, a lot of folks, uh, you know, we know uh, folks that are in Florida. Um, Florida's got great stuff going on for flips, new construction, and rentals. We're not, we're looking at it, but we're not really involved yet because right. we don't have our team in place. You know, right. you have to have the the, the right contacts um, and the right system. Right, right. You so know. are you guys flying out to these places? Oh yeah, and oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you we, we don't just rely on on a family member or a business partner that you know somebody that, you heard of. Yeah, or even somebody that we have a relationship with. I mean, we still go fly out there. Uh, we meet with a bunch of brokers, for mm, instance, different smart. ones, right. um, and really understand the market, meet with uh, 
contractors, property man, you've got to meet all these people, the sellers, right. you know, go look at the neighborhoods, the product. Um, I mean, we've been in some cities that, yeah, you know, wholesalers will send properties to Californians and New York, you know, the coastal com- right, you know, people right. where they feel the money is. And, and you'd see these incredible numbers and in, in returns. But when you drive out there, I mean, it looks like uh, Beirut after after right. a raid. Right. And some folks, you're like, I don't want to be in that neighborhood. You know, yeah. You got to yeah, be mean, careful. Either that or, or uh, so example, I had, uh, I think it was five, a bulk of five properties that came into us. Yeah. And they were in Detroit. Now, luckily, I have some really, really close friends of mine that are, are you know, investors in Detroit. So I ended up sending them the properties and said, hey, I'll bring you in if these make sense because you guys are there, this, that, and the other. And I could, you know, get a flight and fly out there if it makes sense. They looked at it and says, no, man, you're going you're, you're to get took if you actually buy the stuff. And right. I lose pennies. But I don't know enough of that area. So being able to rely on other investors or – and actually, I met them, uh, my friends out in Detroit. I met them through uh, friends that I met at your guys' club. Yeah who introduced me to them, and then we built a relationship over like a year, and then when this started happening. So you, you just never know. In and fact, think- that's a great resource, and we and we use them as the uh, other real estate investment clubs right. in these other cities. Um, they, they have so many resources, and people that want to help and partner utilize them. That's awesome. So and you just reach out to other clubs, You too. reach out to other clubs and, and, and their members, and, and ultimately you have to get with people that, that – really know what they're doing and that you can trust right you know and and do what they say they're going to do so absolutely it's all about integrity yeah Yeah. no doubt so doing new construction and i'm assuming with new construction some of the things that you're getting into i know it takes money it it takes money so how, how like so how are you guys coming up on your cash is it coming out of your pocket directly are you using hard money private money combination of all of it all of it really right okay so um yeah well daryl jump in here there are private lenders or hard money lenders, as, as you could call them, that do lend on new construction projects. We're building homes. They're, they're funding 80% of the purchase. They're funding 80% of the construction wow. costs. Okay, so that's a pretty significant amount. Now, are you using some type of gap funding, or are you covering the... Right, so we have our, our uh, private lending partners, you mm-hmm. know, folks that come in, and, and they come in with us. They're passive investors. You know, they get a rate of return. Some of them have been with us for years. Uh, our business is expanding, so we bring in new people, and and we show them what we do. We show them examples. They can do diligence us, us talk to people that have uh, been in and out mm-hmm. with us over and over again. And, and uh, you know, I think as much as we can say, <laughs> right. you know, without quoting exact numbers, you know, because right. we are on public radio, is, is they enjoy their consistent double-digit returns. Right. Right, absolutely. Yeah, and and that's why we buy on the margins we do because we want to support our investors absolutely. too. Absolutely, absolutely. You got to be smart about that. Now the raising capital, and and I think that's where uh, I know when I got a chance to sort of chat with Jay Massey. You know, he does syndications, a lot of different things like that. How are you guys kind of raising your capital right now? Is it just through relationships with people that happen to have some money, and you're lining something with them, or that's that's how it starts? Uh, right. Start with your close network, your friends and family. And uh, in fact, Ebron's mom often tells us, I'm not going anywhere. You are my best investment. <laughs> our own mothers are invested in our company. <laughs> right. That's true. Awesome. His mom's in too. <laughs> so, you know, other people know people. Um, oh, it took her a few years to, 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 to watch me to say, you know, is he for real? So, right, right. Is he really doing this? <laughs> she knew or? me as the, as the son that went to school and is the well, scientist. I, yeah. I think, you know, it's, yeah. hard for the, it's hard for most people to wrap their heads around what we do because everybody's told from a young age, you, you go to school, you, you get get good grades when you get done with school you either uh, go to college or you get a job and if you go to college when you get done with that you still get a job or you join the military like in my case and then when you get done with the military you get a job um, and, and, and that's it and then you and then sort you of hang out save, survive you, you try to save some money so when you're too old to do anything you can live in a, a manufactured home and and just survive you know part of our private money comes from a lot of people who do have w2 jobs they love their jobs it's fantastic right. um you know, don't, don't do anything else. They love the passive investments. A lot of a lot of these people didn't realize until we educated them that they could use their IRAs and self-direct into real estate. Right. Right. Or, or move their 401k. Yeah, a lot of them have moved their 401ks over um, and invest through that. So it's actually their retirement plans that are earning 
these double digit returns consistently. Yeah, and I, I actually would really like to talk about that some more because I know uh, actually one guy that I met at your club, and that's that's what he specializes in, whether it's self-directed, he talks about that as well, yep. other people's IRAs, 401ks, uh, solo. We have our own IRAs invested, of right. course. So, so I, I would like to talk more about that. I know we're gonna take another commercial here pretty quick. I wanna talk more about that, and then I think after that we're actually gonna start getting into um, how people can bring you properties. How would you expect if you want to see a burnout or uh, a land deal or something like that, um, if somebody wants to bring you a deal, whether it's in California or a different state, how they would, how you would like to see that structured? I think that would be really important. Sure. Um, but it's just fascinating to me when you talk about a, a 401k, because how many people really know that? I have something that I'm already investing in, but I can actually leverage what I have to invest it again to make more money off of my original investment with my normal job that I have that I go to every day of the week. Um, very, very cool. So we're going to start spinning down here in a second for our commercial. Um, real quick before we do, you had mentioned earlier that you mentioned a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh, sure. And I make sure anybody that starts talking to me that they have to read that book before we actually have serious conversations about working with me as a partner. Agreed. And uh, so what are you guys reading right now? <laughs> Well, well um, let's see. Napoleon Hill, Always Laws of Success, and uh, Think and Grow Rich. I, I'm, I'm rereading those books again. What about you? Yeah, I, uh, I reread a lot of books. Um, in fact, this one's a reread, and it's just for fun. Uh, and it's not a, a self help or, uh, or investment type book. It's a In Search of Captain Zero by uh, Alan Weisbecker. Right. Really cool story. It's fun. It takes me back on vacation. Um, went through my divorce and I, I discovered The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. That's a great book. And that really uh, translates to our through our whole lives. I right. read that 10 or 12 times and had to buy it the book 10 or 12 times because everybody Isn't it funny how that it. works? Yeah, yeah, I usually read three books at a time every month and I always end up rereading. One of the three is always a reread of something I've already read. Right. And so I think this month I'm reading uh, The Power of Habit is one of the books. That's I'm cool. reading The Slight Edge, which has probably been the most motivating book for me. Uh, one of my old officers while I was in the Marine Corps, probably you know years ago, he mentioned this book and I never read it. And it's probably been the most motivating book I've read to this point, and then awesome. the third one, I'm actually going back and reading The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Got um, that one too, yeah, that's I've a good re one. I've read yeah. that yeah. so many times, and every time I reread it, I'm like, ah, it makes sense now. Huh. So the one I, I'm in the middle of that I hadn't read before is uh, Jim Rohn's Leading an Inspired Life. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. I'm probably about a third of the way through it and loving it. Very cool. All right, so let's go ahead and spin down. Let me look back there and see if he's ready. We're gonna spin down, and we're gonna take a commercial break so we can pay the bills, and we'll be back here shortly. Right, I'm back. This is Chris McCullough with the Average Joe Real Estate Investment Show. And, you know, we were going to get into a couple of the things uh, like the IRA, the 401k, things like that. But unfortunately, we're starting to run out of time. So we'll probably do this separate on a podcast so you guys can listen in on that. Um, but I, there's one last thing that I really want to talk about. And it's the fact that uh, these guys, Coot and Clark, they actually run the Del Mar Phoebe, the Del Mar Real Estate Investment Club. And, and I want you guys to sort of Talk about that. What is what is it? What well, is the Real Estate Investment Club? It's the San Diego Investment Club. It is held in Del Mar at the Del Mar Hilton. We meet once a month right. on the very first Thursday of every month. Uh, we do it not only to help ourselves, but we do it because we want to help our investment community be better entrepreneurs and investors. Um, it's a fantastic opportunity to come out, meet other people, and, and do networking. Networking is so important Absolutely. in this business. Absolutely. It's, it's, you know, I started going a little while back and well, no, it's been about two years. It seems like it wasn't that long ago, but I've been going for a couple of years now. And uh, it's one of the best, best, you know, few hours that I spend every month going to, and I go to quite a few clubs. I mean, do you guys go to other clubs as well? We absolutely. do go to other, absolutely. absolutely. We go to other clubs, you know, never stop educating yourself, never stop learning and growing. Lifelong learning. You have absolutely. to. Lifelong learning. Yeah. And, and it's, it's just all about networking. I mean, this, it's a people you need to be out there and meet people. You don't know what you don't know. Uh, we're, we're both consistently learning. Uh, it's one of the reasons you run this radio show or you right? host the radio show. Because you love to learn. I, well, I, I do this selfishly because I want to talk to people like you. I get an opportunity to sit down one-on-one -on -one 
with people like you and just ask all the questions I want to hear. That's and, exactly <laughs> it. Yeah, it's the same thing for us. You know, people say, what's in it for you guys? Why do you do this? I mean, it's it's a huge production to, to you know, run this every month. And, right. you know, and Daryl's the one that, that does a lot on it. And people don't realize that, you know, we'll have guest speakers, guest educators come on. We're right. not going to have, you know, uh, big programs run to the back of the room. People have some stuff for sale, but it's not a pitch fest. Right. No, it's, um, it, it's amazing real estate education from some of the top speakers in the country. Right. And I know I've seen some of the best. Again, Bruce Norris is going to be there next Bruce month. Bruce Norris is going to be there. Usually the prep work for each speaker starts three months beforehand. Wow, I didn't and know we're that. doing this every month. So they're all overlapping. There's a whole process that we go through. Right. So some of yeah. the topics would be like tax and legal strategies, fix and flips, wholesaling, buy and holds, apartment investing, raising money, marketing, and so many other strategies. And we do it um, for the education for ourselves. We get to give back, but it's the networking. That's it what I was going to really ask about next. Like, why did you start this? Because I mean, you're busy as it is. I know you guys are really busy. So you basically started it because you wanted to have a place where there's networking taking place. We it's learn from people all the time. We find so many partners. Um, a lot of our investors we've met through our club and other clubs. Right. And you know, and, and I heard about that. Yeah. Um, I know, you know, JMB, which we both are big fans, JMB sure. House Solutions, right? Home Solutions, excuse me. Um, they said that when they first started wanting to get into investing, they actually got together. They met you at the club meeting. Next thing you know, you guys became joint venture partners or JV yeah. partners. And that's how they learned this business. And now they're doing great they're things They're off there. on their own. They're now. off on their own. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. mentored them. We have mentors. We mentored them to help them get started. Right. We felt like they were good enough we to, learned from to them do it by well. themselves. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think that's, that's really great. I think people... Uh, like yourselves who start something like that, it's a huge benefit to everybody. But you also get your own, your needs fulfilled as well. Sort of like why I wanted to do this show. When I got uh, scouted, they said, hey, would you like to do a show? At first, I was actually against it. But then when I started thinking about, man, I get an opportunity not only to really pass along great content to anybody that would want to listen in on this, but it's an opportunity for me to sort of fulfill a lot of things that I want to learn about, that I want to know. So I, I just think it's wonderful. And I, I want to let you guys know I appreciate what you've done Thank because you. I get a lot out of the club. And I'm, I'm there every month. And if I'm not, it's usually because I'm turning a deal literally that night <laughs> and I can't make it. Well, it's, it's because of people like you that we can actually even do the club. That's you know, right. We, we've got some great sponsors. But if people weren't willing to come listen and uh, to be open to being educated, we wouldn't have the club. Well, how, how can people find you? So, you know, how if somebody said, I want to go to the club or I want to uh, talk with Cook and Clark, maybe even joint venture with them, how can people find you? Probably one of the fastest ways would be to Google San Diego Investment Club. Uh, you can visit the website, San Diego Investment Club dot com. Find us on Facebook or we're, we're there on Facebook. I love as well. Facebook. Join our group. Yeah. Join our meetup group. Um, that's how folks register. Right. Okay, wonderful. Well, guys, if you didn't know, we're almost to the end here. Uh, so I'm going to start closing this down. I want to thank both of you. Genuinely, thank you so much for coming on the show. I know we've been kind of trying to work on this the last couple of months because you guys have been busy. I've been extremely busy. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate having both of you on the show. And I'm actually looking forward to maybe down the road having you back on again. Awesome. Uh, to, to talk a little more about some of these things. Um, and I, I think the big one for me, um, closing down again, I'm Chris McCullough. Uh, I host this show and I would absolutely love for all of you guys to reach out to me if you can. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at, at KSA Chris. You can find me on Instagram at KSA Chris. Send me your questions. Send me the topics that you would like to talk about and uh, uh, reach out to me. Start exploring and let us know. Um, I, I really want to ensure that we're putting out some quality content and, uh, you know, that's that's my goal quality content for you guys so you can actually learn and grow and get going and also make sure if you want to send an email to kukan clark it's info at k-u-c-a-n that's kukan and clark c-l-a-r-k dot com info at kukan and clark dot com and spell out the and in the middle a and d all right everybody thank you so much san diego we appreciate it. and all those people that are going to be listening to us online and uh we'll see you again this is chris mccullough average joe real estate investment show thank you much Sunshine, she's here. You can take a break.